Good morning. This video, we're going to go over questions 75, 76, and 77. So let's do it. In the question, it states, a survey was conducted to determine the percentage of college seniors who've chosen to who would have chosen to attend a different college. They took a random sample of 100 college seniors, and 34% said they would have attended a different school. Please perform a 90% confidence interval. So let's take a look. The information from the question, the number of people we asked is 100. The proportion of the sample, 34% said yes. So that's actually technically 34 successes, I guess you would say, because we're defining successes as saying yes to the yes or no question. The yes or no question is, would you have gone to a different school? Now, if this wouldn't have been 100, let's think success would just be the number times the percent. So if we asked 200 people, then we would need, we would know that 68% of the people we asked, and they kind of hid that in the question, but not, it wasn't too hidden. So now, knowing this information, we can use a fancy calculator and determine that. We hit menu, statistics, we go to confidence interval, and we say to ourselves, what kind of a confidence interval do we want? Well, it's definitely a proportion question, so I'm gonna scroll down to proportion, and I only have one set of 100, so I'm gonna hit one proportion Z test. So they've asked me questions like how many successes, how many people that I'd ask, and set the confidence interval. So now you see why I calculated that. So if I asked 100 people, I'm gonna put N is 100, they only told me 34% of the 100. So I know here I need to type in 34 successes, 34 people, and the default confidence level is 95. So I need to be careful, go ahead and change that number to 0.9 instead of 0.95, hit enter, and we get exactly our answer. It says the confidence interval, the lower interval is 0.262 and the upper interval is 0.418. That's exactly what C states. So that is our interval, loving it. Next question. This one's also very straightforward. Looking at question 76, it says, what's the key distinction between a well-designed experiment and an observational study? The only one that makes sense is D, and this is the one we talked about in class over and over again. So let's take a look. D says an experiment can, not always, but can show direct cause and effect, whereas observational study cannot. So let's think about why that's the best choice and why that's important. I've written here that lurking variables preclude, that's just a fancy word for keep you from, making a direct cause and effect. So for this question, if I don't know what it is that's controlling the outcome of my survey, then I can't say that in effect was what was causing it. The only way I can do that is if I can isolate all of these other variables, and if I can isolate them, then I can say cause and effect. And that's why in science class, we always say cause and effect because we work really hard to isolate variables. In an observational study, I can't do that. So let's think about this one more time. For instance, if I did an observational study about people that live a long time, one of the questions I might ask them is to say, do you go to the doctor regularly? And they say, yes, absolutely. So if the preponderance of people that go to the doctor live longer, I can't say going to the doctor causes long life. In fact, probably it has something to do with maybe people that eat healthy go to also go to the doctor. Or people that take and put health as a priority in their life, going to the doctor is part of that. Or maybe it's early detection of disease helps people live longer. I have no idea because in observational study, I can't isolate any of these variables. So I have no idea why they live longer. I can only kind of notice patterns that like, wow, people that go to the doctor live longer, but you don't know which of those variables it is. Is it good health? Is it early detection of disease? Is it priority on health? Who knows? 
That's why we cannot say cause and effect. Let's take a look at the last question here, number 77. A manufacturer of balloons claims a proportion that burst when inflated at a diameter of 12 inches. They believe that those bursts know more than 5% of the time. Some customers have complained that the balloons are bursting more frequently. So the more word immediately tells me that this is a one-sided H sub O. So I write H sub O is P hat. It's believed to be 5% of the time. However, we have a sneaky suspicion that the probability is greater than that. Whether that means 7% of the time or 10% of the time, that's this sneaky suspicion and that's all this question's asking. So that's definitely choice B. Thank you for joining us.